So now we come to <coughs> uh, stanza and number ninety three, I think. Uh, we were talking about uh, the mindful of uh, feeling or sensation and um, uh, we looked at the nature of the feeling or the sensation and now this is the cause or the you know how the sensation forms the sensation um, the causes of the sensation or the how the sensation is created or the feeling is created and its causes and um, through that to understand that uh, there is um, nothing truly existing uh, which is uh, called feeling or sensation. Uh, if between the sense power and the thing there is a space, how will the two terms meet? And if there is no space, they form a unity, and therefore what is it that meets with what? It is usually said that, you know, when the sense organ and the sense object and then the consciousness, three of them kind of comes together, meets, then the feeling of sensation or the feeling arises. Now what uh, Shantideva is trying to say is that this is also, you know, uh, yes, uh, relative, this is a relative term, this is a dependent term. Uh, it seems to be happening like that, but if you look deeply, this is also a kind of an illusion, like a dream. Uh, there is no true reality, in true reality uh, there's nothing uh, really uh, meeting and there's nothing really, you know, uh, three things coming together. Because the sense power, the sense faculty, like, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the hand, for instance, you know, or the you know whatever with which you get the feeling, um, and the sense object, which is the you know uh, happiness or unhappiness or things like that. These two, you know, if they really have to meet, how do they meet? You know. How do they meet? Uh, how do they sense pain or sense pleasure? The uh, the body or the organ or whatever that feels this, you know, the object of the sense. Um, do they really meet or not? If if they meet, how do they meet? How do they uh, come together? Because the sense power and the sense object, the thing, when they meet, is there space between them or not? If you say that uh, if there is a space between them, then there is, it's not meeting because there is space between them. So you can't say it's meeting because there is space. If you say that there is no space between them, then 
they have to merge together because there's no space, so they become one. So you can't say it's a meeting, it's just one. So therefore, you know, uh, two things cannot meet uh, from the uh, true, the, you know, um, uh, from uh, truth point of view, ex- exactly, you know, the truth point of view. Now, if if two things meet, then what what things meet? Because you know, everything is not one. Everything is many, you know, like whether it's your body that is sensing, body is not one thing, it's too many things. And so therefore, if only one part of your body is touching the thing that doesn't, you know, touch the other parts of the body, so therefore it's not meeting. And what part it touches, you know, it becomes a barrier between the others. And even if the, you know, the body is like made of lots of atoms, lots of particles, lots of, you know, we already looked at this, you know, what is, a, you know, made, the body is made of so many things, and then we can divide them and divide them until they become you know, really the tiniest particles that you cannot see. And even then, you know, you can go on kind of um, mm, dividing them until you find that there is nothing. And according to two, according to some um, philosophical, you know, views, there is a partless particle. You can, which you cannot divide it, so therefore it's totally partless. But it is still there. But what is a partless particle? If there is no part, and it still exists, then if two of them meet, because they have no parts, they just merge. And even if two merges, it can't become bigger because. They don't have any parts, so they, you know, it has to just disappear. So therefore, if it is like that, those particles cannot meet because, you know, they just become one because there is no true existence. So therefore, the meeting of two things, like sense object and sense, uh, sense power, sensual or sense organ or whatever is not possible, you know. So if that is not possible, the the question of uh, three things coming coming together uh, does not arise in the true sense of the word. Uh, Ninety-four. No penetration can there be of particle by particle, for they are both the same in lacking volume. And this is already explained. You know, if it is the particle or partless particles meeting, then they cannot because they this part, partless particle has no volume, no parts, so it it has no no true existence. And the other partless particle also same. So how can they put together? How can they, you know, become one? Uh, become meet? You know, they they can't meet uh, because uh, they cannot. Either they become one, or they cannot meet. Mm. But if they do not penetrate, they do not merge. If there is some space between them, then they don't meet. meet. If there is no space between them, then they merge. So they cannot, you know, they cannot meet. If they don't merge, then there is no, no encounter. You know, it's like if they are, they are separate. 
then they don't meet. If they really meet, they merge. If they merge, then it's not meeting, but they become one. For how could anyone accept that what is particle, partless, could be said to meet? And you must show me if you ever saw a contact taking place between two partless things. You know, this is 94. For how could anyone accept that what is partless could be said to meet two partless things? Or because when it's partless, it is like it is nothing, you know, there is nothing there. Because if there is something, it has to have parts. You know, whether it is so small that I cannot see it, doesn't mean that it is not a thing. If it is a thing, it should have, you know, upper side and lower side and east side and west side and things like that. And then it is not partless, it is with parts. And it can be, maybe you cannot, with the, with your power or with the, um, the physical or you know, uh, power of uh, the the existing machines that you cannot, uh, you cannot um, uh, cut it, but it can be. It it has to be separated or cut because it, then it has east side and west side and you cannot call it partless. But if it is totally partless then it cannot, um, there is no volume, there is no east side, west side, there is no upper side and lower side. If that is like that then it cannot meet and if it meets then it becomes one. So therefore, you know, um, how can how can anybody see or know or you know can possibly accept the two truly partless things can meet so therefore you know in a true sense of the word there is no meeting of the sense organ and the sense object But if you say that no, but the consciousness meets the um, the sense object, and therefore you you know you sense it. Ninety six consciousness immaterial, and so one cannot speak of contact with it. Consciousness is is not a material thing; it is an immaterial thing. So immaterial thing means it cannot meet something material. There is nothing. You can't have a meeting point. A combination too has no reality, just as we have previously shown. We talked about these things before. So therefore, you know, when we say that uh, a sense or sense or organ or a sense, you know, the sense and this sense object and then the consciousness meets and thereby the feeling or sensation arises. That is, that is not, uh, you know, that cannot be proved um, in a kind of a, a true way, in a scientific way. Uh, it is. It can be only, you know, like a, a illusory way, you know. In the true sense of the word, there is nothing called meeting. If therefore, that is ninety six now ninety seven. If therefore there is no touch or contact, whence is it that feeling takes its it's it's rise. So if you know no touch or contact, no true touching or no true contact 
between the you know sense organ and the sense object. When, how can a feeling take place? Uh, the feeling cannot arise because of the meeting of the sense organ and sense object. What purpose is there then in all our toil? What it is it in it that torments what? You know, so therefore when we you know we have pain or we have suffering, you know, we say we have pain, we have suffering, we have pleasure because of this thing happening to me, or this thing happening to my this uh, whatever you know uh, this is also um, imputation imputation based on our you know wrong perception and which has become kind of um, strengthened and made it very real through our you know uh, constant uh, way of uh, you know, habitual way of seeing it is like that, and thinking that this is, this is good, this is bad, this is nice, this is not nice, this is painful, this is you know, because of our aversion, attachment, and all these things, we, we kind of create, we impute it in such a way that, this is, good play, good sensation, beautiful sensation pleasurable feeling and this is painful feeling, this is not good and things like that. Otherwise this truly mm, there can't be any uh, any truly, you know, um, sensation arising with contact because there can't be any contact with in a truly existing way. So therefore, you know, um, all this, uh, our feeling of sensation, and you know, all this good, bad, you know, happiness, unhappiness, painful, pleasurable, is also, you know, very much illusory, very much deluded, very much imputed, very much created by our, you know, long-term kind of habitual karmic uh, way of doing things and our um, you know emotional or uh, ignorant way of imputing this is me this is others so we meet and I don't like this so therefore when I have that or I you know uh, uh, when I meet that then I have pain this is I like so when I meet that or when <coughs> that I come contact with that I will have pleasure. All these things is also like that. But we don't realize it and that's why we are samsaric beings and that's why we keep on suffering and we you know we we run after certain things and we run away from things and then constantly, constantly, constantly we are so afraid of meeting. <coughs> we are so, you know, anxious that we will have that. And so all these, you know, sensations are very much to do with our, with the way we, uh, we perceive things and we impute things. Uh, so this is uh, 77, I think, 97. Uh, 97. So I read the Tibetan part of it. Kalte onde parte na teta konden teprins. Parme na yuchi ne te konhi konden teprins. Dulten, Dulten, Lan, Jimmy, then the Kami, Yamban, my Hupel and Dimitri, Mandipal and Tepa, Chami, Palaun, Tepa, Shawa Chatan Teperance, Tepa ton, a Chami, Garden ton, a temper cheese. 
I think after there. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>